Up to this point, we have been conducting a univariate analysis on the data set. We have been analyzing only one variable at a time. We have used measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion, and some accompanying data visualization to better understand one particular column in our data set. Now we can move on to conduct a different type of analysis, a bivariate analysis. Bivariate analysis is where we analyze two different variables together. We can compare two different columns from a data set or try to measure a relationship between the two. Similar to how we conducted our univariate analysis, we will calculate some measures about our data and also build some data visualizations as well. This includes running a correlation analysis between two continuous variables and creating a scatter plot to visually see the relationship between these variables. We will also run a simple linear regression for two columns, plotting a line of best fit on our scatter chart. Correlation is a statistical measure that measures the extent to which two variables are related. Correlation measures a linear relationship, meaning that two variables change together at a constant rate. Correlation describes a relationship between two variables, but it does not make a statement about the cause and effect of this relationship. It does not state which variable causes another variable to increase or decrease. Correlation also does not consider the effect of other variables outside of the two being considered. Correlation is a unit-free measurement, which means that correlation measures exist on their own scale. For example, if we wanted to know the relationship between dollar sales and the temperature in degrees Celsius, the correlation measure is not on the same scale as either dollars or temperature. This is different from some of the measures that we have already seen, such as our measures of central tendency or dispersion. For instance, the mean of the dollar sales measurements is on the same scale as its variable, dollars. The correlation coefficient quantifies the strength of the relationship between two variables, and correlations are also tested for statistical significance. More on this a bit later. We describe correlations with a unit-free measure called the correlation coefficient, which ranges from negative 1 to positive 1 and is denoted by R. The closer R is to zero, the weaker the linear relationship. Positive R values indicate a positive correlation, which means that as one variable increases, the other variable increases as well. Negative R values indicate a negative correlation. Where one variable increases, the other tends to decrease. Regression is a technique used to predict the value of a single continuous target variable, which we often refer to as y. We predict these values from input data, which we will call the independent variable, or the x variable. When the target variable is predicted using only one independent variable, and we can describe the relationship between the two with a straight line, the method is known as single or simple linear regression. Regression can be applied to a whole range of different tasks, from predicting revenues and costs to predicting life expectancies and film review scores. To conduct a simple linear regression analysis, we first take a sample data set where both x and y values are known. We then plot a line of best fit across this data to help us make predictions about data points where y is unknown. Our line of best fit is given by the form shown here, y is equal to mx plus b. The y variable is our estimated or predicted target variable value for a particular value of our independent variable x. As an example, x could be a measure of the amount of rainfall in a month, and from this we want to predict umbrella sales as our y variable. The results of this would allow us to look at a weather forecast and decide how much stock we need to order. m and b are the parameters, or coefficients, that will define the line and are what is calculated, or fitted, in the regression process. b represents the intercept of the line, or in other words, 
where the line crosses the y-axis. You can think of this as the number of umbrella sales made, even if we had no rainfall. M is the slope of the line. The slope represents the increase in y, or sales that we can expect, for every unit increase in x, or our rainfall. If you want to learn a little bit more about linear regression and other regression techniques, be sure to check out BEDA's regression course. For our bivariate analysis in Excel, we can start by generating a scatter plot. Scatter plots are useful for visualizing correlations or relationships between quantitative variables. As bivariate analysis is concerned with analyzing two different variables together, scatter plots are a natural fit. Let's take a new subset of our original data. This time, we will include the volume column as well. So let's select all of our data, and we'll copy this from our data tab to our bivariate sheet. And we'll paste the values in here. Let's delete the open to low columns. So we're left with date, price, volume, and change. We're interested in analyzing the relationship between volume and the change in price. So let's select these two columns, go to insert on the ribbon, and let's insert a scatter plot. And I'll move this up here and make it a bit bigger so we can see it more clearly. Based on the scatter plot alone, it is difficult to see what the correlation is between these two columns. The scatter appears a bit like a cloud, which indicates that there might be no or just a weak correlation. To see exactly how these two columns are correlated, we can once again use the analysis tool pack, which can provide us the correlation coefficient. So let's go to data, analysis tool pack. And this time we'll select correlation and hit OK. Our input range are going to be our volume and our change columns. We do have labels in the first row. And let's select our output range to be cell F1. And we'll hit OK. This gives us a correlation coefficient of negative 0.24. So we do have a negative correlation between these two columns, although the correlation might be a bit stronger than we initially thought based on just this scatter plot alone. Sometimes you'll see a regression line drawn through the middle of a scatter plot. A regression line is a straight line that lies as close as possible to every point in this scatter plot. We can add this by adding a chart element. We'll add a trend line and make sure it's a linear trend line. From this format trend line pane, we can add some additional labels to the trend line, such as the equation. So let's display the equation on the chart. So when we add this label, we can see both the slope and the intercept of our trend line. We can also use the analysis tool pack again to create a regression analysis and to produce a similar chart. So let's go back to data on the tab, data analysis. And if I scroll down, we can see a regression option. So I'll hit OK. To select our Y range, that's going to be our change column. So we'll select all the values of change. For our X input, that's going to be our volume column. So we can select all of the values of volume. We do have labels. And for the output range, let's select to cell right next to our scatter plot. So cell P4. And we want to produce a line fit plot here. So I'll click that and select OK. And I'm going to take our volume line fit plot and I'm just going to move it next to our scatter plot. Let's resize the scatter plot and we'll move the volume plot underneath. And notice how these two charts are the same. Our linear trend line matches the predicted value of the price change from our chart underneath. Creating the chart with the analysis tool pack also gives us additional information in this output to the right. I'm going to delete these two columns so it's easier to see. We can see the multiple R from our regression is the same as the correlation coefficient between these two variables that we calculated earlier, as well as the intercept here 
and the slope of our line is the same as the equation that we plotted on our scatter plot. 